Today, we've got some speedy styling tricks with the master of speedy styling tricks. Let's all in the chat welcome our man, Sam Via. I don't know about master of, of speedy tricks. Matter of fact, Andrew, I was thinking how, how much that speedy word bothers me. You know? Okay, how come? Yeah, you know, I, I just thought it's not about being speedy. I really think, you know, it's about um, learning how to maximize your time. And if you can learn things that, that like for me to do a French twist, you know, like a French twist. Oh, mm -hmm. my gosh. I was horrible, Andrew. And it would take me a good 45 minutes to do a simple little French twist. Not not so, to some people, not so simple. But yeah. I think if we can find easier ways and that way we maximize our time, I think that's what this is about. So, guys, so eliminate that word speedy. Don't think about speedy. Just think about just taking in what we're about to do. How's that sound, AC? Sounds fantastic because I'm not a very fast person, but I need to be efficient to stay on time. So love it yeah. and take it away. Ciao, Alessandro. How are you, my friend? Great to, to uh, see you on the chat there, Alessandro. I hope things are well, my friend, uh, wherever you happen to be and give my hugs and rasos a Italia. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well. Shirley, good morning. Uh, everybody from, I, I noticed uh, Nebraska was on, Chicago, New York. Uh, Ottawa, Canada, Jay Alberto, glad you're here. All right, so let's talk about some things, what we're going to do today. What I want to do today is I really think that there's I, 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 there was a video that I just did, and I'm talking about a beauty boom that's going to happen. And what do I mean by the beauty boom? What I'm thinking is that finishing is going to become really valuable in the salon. I think it's something, a skill set that we're going to start to pick up a little bit more, something that we're going to kind of like to explore a little bit more and do things in a little bit of a different way, if you will. But it's about finding different ways to do what you maybe already do. So I'm not going to show you anything uh, like, like, wow, that's that's new. But I'm going to show you something, some things different. I've also got some fresh looks that I want to share for you. And then I'm going to review some looks that I've actually done in the past. But Pretty excited about this because I really think it's about the finishing that's going to create the experience. It's about understanding now that as a hairdresser, you behind the chair, what's important is I think the hairdressers that are going to win the game, let's call it a new game, if you will, that are going to win the game are the ones that are going to educate behind the chair. So I really believe that it's so important. Hi, Sonia. Glad to see you. Uh, I really hope that everybody understands it's so important that you understand your skills are valuable with your hands, but how you're going to use this combined with this is going to be important in the future. So really, hi, Leah Cummings. So really important that you focus on really educating behind the chair. And why are you saying that, Sam? Because it's so easy to access information and clients are, if you're not going to do it, somebody else is going to do it. So it's either going to be what you're looking at now, your computer, going to go online, Google it, and hopefully they'll find Sam Via and the team. We pop up on YouTube and we show them how to create volume in the crown. So let's get started, guys. What I want to do is these are some really cool little looks that I've been playing around with. And I, I actually did this one this morning, Andrew, and then I started taking a part and I'm going, OK, I like that. So it's interesting how you play with things and you discover, you know, other ways to do what you already do. But when you take things apart. That's when it becomes pretty exciting. So what I want to do is I want to start out with something uh, pretty simple. And I want to go right here. So, Andrew, you saw me last week. I, I did that uh, Chinese ladder, buddy. But watch what I'm going to do this time. Okay. Once again, just another take on that Chinese ladder. That's right, buddy. You big boogie, boogie, boogie eyes, you. All right. Here we go. Now watch this. Okay. I'm going to sit down today so you guys can see. So the looks behind you that you see behind me, I'm going to show you. Plus, I'm going to add a little things and talk about a lot of things here. All right. So ponytails. Ponytails are going to be, I think, the accessory of the season. A lot of people have been, uh, you know, are getting layers. If there's any uh, thing that's happening cut-wise, your number one request in salons is layers. The number two request is trims. And the number three request is bobs, some type of bob. So people are doing a lot of ponytails because they've grown their hair out but they might be layering it. So I want to explore a couple of ponytails and just show you a couple of tricks. So here's a good trick that is great. If you do a color and she doesn't want to blow dry, pull it back wet and you can do this trick wet. I'm going to show it to you dry so you can see it. Now my product of choice, when I'm working with these looks, product is not an option, it's a necessity. I think it's really important that we all understand this. So today I'm working a lot with my Rough Paste 12. This is one of my favorite products to work with when I style. And then I also like working with my Outshine 01. I think prepping and understanding product and how to use it is so important. Okay. 
I'm going to go through now and pull this back into elastic. When I use elastics, I recommend what you do is get these clients to kind of go in. And what I want them to do is I want them to use the uh, Outshine 01 and actually coat the elastic with the Outshine. So you're actually putting this Outshine, this lotion on the elastic. Now, why would you do that, Sam? You're going to buffer the cuticle. So you just add a buffer to the cuticle so it doesn't indent it. So now I've been talking about you for a while now, tell versus sell. So that's just me telling the client whether they buy it or not. It doesn't matter. It really does. But I put my focus more on the telling versus the selling. And I think when you focus on the telling, it really makes a difference. It's not so much hard sell. It's a little bit more soft sell. All right. Rough paste. That's going to be my product of choice. So now I like to work with this and you'll see. So I'm going to put it right here. So I'm going to put it just on top of my hand. I'm just going to take a small pea size. And the reason being is because I'm going to introduce you to, to just kind of tying some knots. But watch what I'm going to do here with a friend, with a uh, ladder, okay, and Chinese, what's known as a Chinese ladder. But watch what I do that's different to it, okay? So here we go. All right. Uh, Sam, sir, do you miss your students? Yes. Gosh, Sonia, I miss being out on the road. Uh, I know pretty soon I'm going out on the road. I've got an exchange class coming up. And that's towards the fall. So I want you to make sure that if you say, I've been watching you all season, Sam, and now I want to really experience you in person. Well, if you want to experience me in person, then I recommend the Reckon Exchange. I'm going to be teaching a class with the incredible master himself, Mr. Chris Barron. He and I will be doing a class. And we really are going to focus on every, a lot of things, not on what we've been showing you, but more things. Now, watch this, AC. Check this out, buddy. Okay. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to go in and do a Chinese ladder, but I'm going to reach over, watch my pinky now. You got to watch this, okay? I'm going to reach over with my pinky, grab this strand, pull it across. See, I just pulled it across. Now watch me take my right hand and just flip it over and hand all that to my left hand. Now see the loop that I've created? I've created a loop, okay? I'm bringing her a little closer for you so you can see, guys, right? Really important to me you get this. All right, now watch what I'm going to do. All I'm going to do is play, take my hand inside, go inside. Now I'm going to come through, grab what I pulled through, grab and pull it through and now tie. Okay. Now watch again, watch. So start out with two strands. Okay. Add some hair because I'm going to, each time I, after I tie, I'm going to add hair. Now watch this, get the mechanics guys in this. That's so important. Okay. So now watch my pinky. It pulls this across, which creates the loop. Now cross your hand over the loop and grab that. See what I just did. Now pinch all of that together. See how I'm controlling that. Now, once you have that pinched together, you can make this loop bigger if you want to get your fingers in. Now, go inside. Now, just take what you have here. Now, just bring it underneath, grab it, and pull it through the loop. Okay, now watch the pattern. See, it's all about visual value. It's about the pattern that these things make in terms of when you're working with them. So, watch the pattern. Okay, so now I'm going to grab again. So, I grab on the outside. I need a little more product. See, I just keep going back to product. Go back to product. Okay, so I just tap. And if I find if I put it on my wrist, some people, Andrew, they put it on their wrist and it starts to melt. You get a little hot right there at that at where it's at. So now watch again. I grab a section. Now, Sam, you, speedy. Remember what I said? Forget the word speedy. Focus on the technique. But speed comes with practice. Did you get it? Speed comes with practice over and over and over again. Now, I don't think it's about so much speed. Just understand, get the technique, get the rhythm of what I'm doing. And then once you do it over and over, the time period of how long it takes you is just going to naturally shorten. But don't think about, I got to do this in a hurry. That's not what it's about. Okay, here we go again. See how I picked up and I added hair to that. Now watch my right hand. The right hand grabs all of that as one strand, pulls it over. Now, once you're here, you can pinch that. See, I just pinched that. Now, just cross over and hand that to your pinch. See, now you got a loop. Put your hand through the loop. Take the section that was crossed over, this one. Bring it underneath, grab it, and pull through. Okay, now watch again. Look at the pattern, guys. Grab a section again. See, and then what I love about that rough paste is it acts more kind of like a bonding, a, excuse me, a binding product. Been working so much with bonders, the acidic bonding concentrate, Andrew from Redken. Okay, here we go. See that? Now let's get a little bit more product. So after you pick, pick up and add hair to the sections, just come back in, get a little bit more product and just work that product through to bind that section together. Now, here we go. Watch the pinky. This is where the trick really happens. It's in that pinky. So my right pinky grabs all of this, pull it across, and you'll start to make a letter U. 
Okay, now just pinch that. You just pinch it. Just grab it. Okay, now bring all that hair over to that and see you've got a loop. Now make the loop bigger so you can get your hand through. Take what you crossed right here, bring it underneath and through. Now watch my rhythm. Watch. See the, see the, the visual I'm creating? Okay, now watch the rhythm. Here, here, pinky, over. See, I've, I've got on my own. Once you get going, guys, you'll get your own method. You'll find shortcuts of how you can do things. And, and that's what I love about things is just going in and do it. Oh, well, that didn't work. <laughs> I'm not going to stand in front of you claim to be perfect, guys. All right. Here we go. Let's go back here. There we go. And here. All right. Here we go. Back to it. Boom. I pull across with my pinky. Okay. I just wrap right around, grab that loop, and pull through. Okay. Here we go again. Grab a section of hair, add to the right. Grab another section of hair, add to the left. Okay. Now, once I'm here, okay, slow down, Sam. Grab some product. Okay. Stay in control. If there's anything I'm going to tell you, it's stay in control, guys. Okay. So when you're learning, slow down. Get that rhythm thought process in your head. Now, watch the pinky. Comes across, grabs. So it grabs, pulls across. I turn my right hand over, hand it over. I grab my loop. I can see my loop. Grab it. And now I just take this section and pull right through. Now, look at the look at the pattern that I've gotten out of that, Andrew, which I think is really cool, guys, when you look at this pattern. Okay. Now, there's so many things that you could do with it here. You could finish this and just leave this down as a ponytail. You could certainly wrap this around. You know, I mean, use this as a set. Some, if they take this out and their hair is wet and you do this, at some point what's going to happen is that hair is going to, kind of mold to this undulation or to the texture. So you could use this as a set, and, and but they walk it out with some visual value. That's the main point. Now watch what I'm going to do. See, I just put my elastic. Now you could leave it down or come around and do something like this, okay? And I'm into, like, I just love a little bit of um, a softness to it, and that's what I'm into. I'm, I'm kind of into leaving these guys out, okay? Now once again, Leave it out, which I think is really cool, just the way that it looks, okay? Or you can come through and put it in. What I noticed at the Oscars, if you watch the Oscars, just type a word yes in there, okay? And what I noticed at the Oscars is uh, very casualness in terms of the upstyles. I didn't see anything that was too coiffed. I got to tell you, I loved Halle Berry's hair. I loved it. Nico, you did a great job on Halle Berry's hair. Now, if you don't know who I'm talking about, Nico does Halle Berry's hair, and he was a guest on The Show Must Go On. But I just loved what he did to it. I mean, that bob and that little baby fringe, Andrew, I don't know if you saw it, but I was just so excited to see somebody walk in with a strong haircut. All right? But a lot of the upstyles that I saw, they were really low. They were really low down towards the bottom, which I think would really was really interesting in regards to the way that we saw them. And just very, very much a sense of casualness. You know, we've all been talking about that lived in kind of organic look. And we saw that there at the Oscars. All right. All right. So now let's go over here and let me show you how I did this particular look here. See, a matter of fact, I saw someone that had something like this. Uh, I can't remember who the actress was, but a lot of things were pulled low. I tend to think as we move forward, your ponytails are going to go high, and I'm going to show you how to create that. But look what I did here. Now, this is, once again, just from ponytails, working with ponytails. So let's just take this out. And then instead of working with a braid, what I worked with is more of a twist. So let me just show you what I did here. This is hit with a texture iron, okay? So I want you to take a close look at this particular mannequin, okay? Oh, yes. Uh, Margot Robbie. Yeah, Hallie. Yeah. Margot Ro Robbie. Yeah, Shirley, you missed the Oscars, my dear. Yeah, Katie, I loved her fringe. Lots of pullbacks and soft romantic waves. That's right, Hallie. Simple pullbacks, just like what I'm trying to focus on here today. Just some simple little pullbacks, guys, in regards to that. All right. Now watch. So here's what I did. Number one, she's prepped. Okay. So what do you mean, Sam? Well, sometimes like this particular ponytail here that I just did, sometimes what we find is we'll find that the, the looks that we're doing, guys, they don't have enough volume. So the tool of choice to get the volume is the texture iron. 
So now watch what I mean. Look at this pin man. Look at, see, can you see that's been here with a texture iron? So it's not, what's nice about this particular texture iron is look how close the rails are, the, ri the ridges are. Okay, so it's not so wide like back in the 70s or the 80s when you look at this texture iron. Okay, people call this a mini crimping iron. We refer to it as a texture iron because it alters the texture of the hair. So it get, it's going to give you one-third to two-thirds added volume. So now look at what I did on this one, Andrew. What I did was pull two ponytails together, all right? But I pulled a ponytail. See where I took the section? So the ponytail sits asymmetrical on the top, and then it sits lower on the left. So basically, it's just two ponytails pulled back. So think about where you want things to sit. That's where you will place your ponytail. So I want this, once again, to sit a little bit lower, you saw, but I want it to tilt, okay? I want it to sit a little bit more asymmetrical, okay? Um, so good. Hey, SM, Mo, Mo, you're getting a pony. <laughs> yeah, you're going to tilt there, Andrew. What'd you have, whiskey last night, buddy? All right, here we go. Last night, uh, this morning, bro. Oh, you are cracking me up. Don't you dare. Not yet, or at least share. All right, watch, okay? So now that I've got this, what I want to do is I want to create something interesting. And what I'm discovering is ponytails isolate things, isolate it. I remember in the old days, I relied so much on backcombing. I'm using ponytails more as an anchor, okay? But the texture iron is a, is a saver in terms of going. Well, Sam, I don't have time to texture the entire head. Well, then what I want you to do is put the hair in the ponytail, okay? Now texture the ponytail. And that way, this look that you're going to create will get fat, but you might not necessarily need it up here. Did that make sense? Next thing you could do is you could actually come in, and this is something that I like to do sometimes, Andrew, when the client's a little hesitant on seeing a crimp or seeing that texture, then I just simply want you to take a tail comb, come through, and then I just want you to weave like a highlight, just weave it. Okay, and now just texture the weave. So that you're not doing the in here. So I take a slice, then I take another slice, and I'd weave, texture the weave. Slice, weave, texture the weave. So that way you get a little bit more naturalness, but you're getting the volume that you want. If you're learning something here, just say yes. Type it in the chat box. Okay. How much hair in each section is best with the texture iron? Okay. You have to gauge the density. So if there's more density, meaning a lot of thickness in the hair, then I'm going to go in and take small sections. Okay. If I'm going and I've got um, a fine hair, I could take a little bit of a bigger section. Now, I'll also love, here's the home run on this. Okay. What I love using this tool for is a cut like this. Okay. This is what I, where I love using this tool is I love using it on something that's like this. And where I'm doing and seeing in these volumes now, Andrew, all this volume is coming forward. You know, it's all coming forward. It's not so much 90s going back. So in order for me to get the volume coming forward, what I'm doing is I'm using the texture iron here, just like that, but I'm bending forward. See, I just did that. Okay. Now, once I do that, look at the texture I get here. You can see it just at that base, but see, that's going to give me the volume and that's giving me the lift that I need. Now, the next section, I wouldn't do it. I'd use a round brush, just get it. Now, next section, I would do it. So it's more or less, think about the direction when you're doing this, whereas before I was going straight up and letting it pop straight up. Now I want that hair to move. Is this making sense, guys? So don't think of just using the tool to get the lift. Think about the direction of where you want that base to go. All right? So, oh, by the way, this, this haircut, everybody's going, how did you do this haircut? This haircut, I want you to keep an eye out. I'm going to be doing this haircut, all right, for you. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the date is. Um, Ashley, if you're on, Ashley M, if you could write it in there when we got it, we talked about that. I can't recall. All right, watch what we're going to do here. Here, I want something soft. I don't need something so heavy. So I'm going to work with a little bit of lotion. Notice each time, I'm going to use Redkins Outshine 01. Notice each time that I'm working with something, I'm going back in and I'm replacing some product into that. And it's so important that you understand, like I said, product is not an option. It's a necessity. So now I'm going to take this, even after I've textured this, I'm going to go in and use it. It's not going to take your texture away, okay? But what it's going to do is give me just a little bit more control. Look at the difference between the section I put it on and the section I have it, okay? Now, I'm going to splice, slice that in two. Now, all I'm going to simply do is just twist, and I'm just going to twist. And I'm twisting very lightly. You know how to do this, okay? 
And like I said, these are maximum, minimum, uh, maximum results with minimum effort. That's what this story is about today. Now, once I'm here, before I place the elastic, I want you to just come in and I want you to just hold, literally just hold it, okay, down towards the bottom and just get it nice and twist. Now watch. Now I just want you to come in, start up the top. And now I just start to just loosen up. And I'm literally holding just a small amount of hair. If you squeeze too hot, tight and you're holding up too high, it's you can't go in and pancake as much as you want. So, yes, this technique is called pancake. I'm just going through and I'm just pancaking, meaning I want this to spread. You know how you pour the pancake dough in the, in the, the pan? And then what happens is once you're there, what happens is it starts to just flatten out and spread. Same thing. I'm just getting this to just spread. Once I've got that in you, now I'm coming through, buddy. And I go through. And I'm using elastic. Now watch this. Biggest, this is a small elastic, but look how skinny it is down there. So what I want you to do is just instead of looping through, crossing and looping through, crossing, looping through, just want you to keep twisting. See that? This is easier instead of me keep looping and looping. Keep twisting till that gets really tight at the base. Now, this is a great hair hack to explain to a client. Let them know that on their little daughter's fine ponytail and they're using such a big elastic. See, now I can come through. I crossed. And now look at how tight that is. And all I did was just cross through once. Now, as I pin, look how I twist. I twisted. The, I twist the same direction I'm going. Now I'm going to come through. Now, anchor. Now it's time for me to anchor. Now, what I want you to do is think about your anchoring points. So this is going to be an anchoring point because I'm going to bring this back under. So that needs to stay there. And then I need to anchor down here. Okay. So I'm going to anchor here first. So by putting this in an elastic at that bottom, it helps me to control it. See how easy it is for me to control? Now I'm going to use a grip, okay? So I'm going to use a grip. But with the grip, what I want to do is I want that toe that kicks up, I want that up against the scalp. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to grab. See where I'm at? See, I just grab and I am just pull. That's where I want that. So I'm going to come through and I'm going to go inside those two and pin inside. That way, that hid that pin inside there, and you don't see it. Now, look at where I'm holding. I'm still holding down here my ponytail. But see how, by just by simply doing this, it gave me some control in regards to that. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring this up. And I love, I like that little piece once again right there. I can just kind of maybe play with this and rouge that, make it look real kind of frothy. Or I could bring it inside and place it there. Okay. Now I like using the mirror. See, so use that mirror. Right now I'm using the computer. The mirror will tell you the truth. It's never going to lie to you guys. So always use the mirror as your as uh, your tool. Okay, to kind of check your balance and where you're at. So I kind of like that. So I'm going to come through and I'm going to pin. Now watch what I'm going to do. To pin this, go back to the elastic, place the pin inside the elastic. Okay. Now, once I have this inside that elastic, now all I got to do is hold on to the pen. And now I can stretch this. See how I can stretch it? Bring, bring the pen the opposite way and now place in. See, and I get a much more firm control out of that. Now, remember, these little ends, I'm liking these guys. I, you know, this whole organic lived-in feeling, carry that, that attitude, that vibe, carry it into your styling, carry it into your finishing. All right, now I'm going to go this this one here. I'm going to do the same thing, okay? So I want to go back through with a little bit more outshine. Okay. And I'm going to come through and emulsify. Okay, if you're learning something today, just type in yes. Okay. All right, good. Yeah, you know what, Cheryl? I got to tell you, it's a great way to change the fabric. Remember, you know, hair is really amazing because when you think about hair, okay, I want you to see this again. Okay, guys, you got it? Yeah, right there. I'm going to bring it down a little lower, love. All right. Excellent. Great. But when you think about hair, hair is just a fiber with an attitude that's ready to be ready, waiting to be changed. So change the attitude of that, the, of this fabric, change the attitude of it. And don't feel that, you know, I've got only what it is to work with you. We now have the ability to change it. Okay. Look what I've done. Okay. Now here's another way you can do this. Once you get to the end, place your elastic on if you want. Okay, and then hold on to the elastic and rouge gives you a little bit more control. Some people like to do that. And the reason being that they like to do that is because 
it just helps to kind of give them a little bit more like control or whatever it is. Remember, I'm just the messenger, guys, just giving you the technique. Now, once I'm here, take a look what I'm doing. Once again, let's get that a little tighter and twist. Look, see how I keep twisting? That's all I'm doing. Now let's loop through. I like to do this technique, especially when I get these beautiful, sleek, sleek, smooth, polished looks. When I go to put the elastic on, I would just mess things up. So I don't want to do that anymore. And by twisting it, it allows you to get the elastic on without messing up what you've done previously. Okay. Now, once I'm here, now look, you see, now you can start to see the asymmetry. But what I want is I want a little bit more twist. See, I just twist that. So it just gives it that, that fabric, gives it the look that I'm looking for. Okay, there we go. Good. Because if I don't twist it, guys, it kind of unravels on its own. And when it unravels on its own, then you're just trying to kind of, you're working too hard. Now, once again, take a look and see, like, yeah, do you like that? Okay, that's your call. Maybe it's the personality of the client. I don't know about you, but I like that. You know, so I'm going to leave that out. It's just a matter of taste, isn't it, Andrew? I mean, it's all about developing your taste. Over the, I, I got to tell you, over the years that I've been in the industry, my taste has changed. You know, my taste has certainly changed in regards to the way I'm doing things and the way I see things. Now it's a matter of details. Okay. And then one of the little tips I want to give you where you hold, that's where you pin. So now I'm going to take a long hair pin. And now I'm just going to come in where I'm holding. I'm going to grab and come back in that strong opposite way. Okay. Now, hairsprays. Hairsprays are great to work with. Okay. But sometimes a lot of clients don't like hairsprays. So I think what you need to do is make them understand I need this to control. So it's prep. What, am I, what did I prep it with? I prepped it with Guts 10, directional blow dry. Then I used Iron Shape 11 at, during my prep for the texture iron. What am I styling with? I'm styling with Outshine, and now what am I going to maintain with? With my Control Attic. Hairsprays, a couple of things. Use the length of the can, and now just burst in my up styles and things. It's just bursts of spray. It's not, don't get so over, overly uh, sprayed on that, okay? And then a lot of times, if I want something shiny, spray with the grain. Do you see how I sprayed with the grain? Then use the can. Something about the chrome of the can and what it does, Andrew just really just imparts a little bit more shine. Sometimes I'm using the can to create rolls and do those kinds of things. All right. Any questions on this one? Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, Alberto, sure. You can leave the ends a little bit longer. Matter of what I said, it's a matter of taste, isn't it? As long as you're learning. My favorite thing about Samsung is the imperfectly perfect, imperfectly perfect simplicity of the end result. Thank you, Shirley. I'm on this quest for the imperfect. For the perfect imperf imperfection. We'll figure that one out. All right, here we go. Let's go on, Andrew. Andrew, here's what I was talking about earlier, where I always had uh, issues with a fringe twist. <laughs> Check it out, Andrew. Poor girl. <laughs> I think you can do that to real clients sometimes. Well, I got to tell you. Well, this tells me, you know, this Sam, this is the look you're doing on this one. Don't forget. <laughs> All right, so let's go to this one. This is cool, guys. Now, what I want to show you is, I, like I said, I think, you know, you're seeing these up styles. And once again, I saw something very similar to this at the Oscars. Well, I can't recall. Once I should have taken a bunch of notes. I wanted to, but I just got excited what was happening. So let me show you how this is done. And uh, this, once again, just the um, idea of a casual uh, role, if you will, not something that's so quaffed and so perfect. So what does that mean, Sam? Well, you know, in order for me to get something casual, I got to loosen up my mindset. So really get into the idea of loosening up your mindset in terms of what you're doing or how you're doing it. So, all right. So here again, this was uh, prepped. Okay. And this is a technique that you're going to see a lot of. I see this a lot in terms of Instagram, uh, a lot of pull through on these ponytails. So here's a ponytail. Okay. And I've seen a lot of things in regards to people pulling the ponytail up, pulling it down. In this particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it sideways. Okay. So first, let's get that ponytail in. Okay. Let's get the paper out of her head. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Back. All right. Back. Now watch. Look at the paddle brush. See how using the paddle brush? See, th by using it this way, it's vertical to the grain. That's going to get the tangles out because the bristles are lined up vertically. When I go in horizontally, that's giving me more tension, okay? 
So detangle, tension. Detangle, tension. Detangle, de uh, tension, detangle. Now watch when I come at the nape. Look at how, notice how my knuckle never left the head. So I never did this. Comb, brush, release, and come back and grab. I always kept this knuckle close to that. See, there's a mechanics of putting in a pony, simple ponytail. Okay, now watch. When I down here, look how I'll use the brush. Bring that to my hand. Bring that to my hand. Now I'm ready to go in and apply my elastic. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to work with the French twist. So I'm going to work with some clear elastics. On these little clear elastics, I double them up. So there's actually two. I'm going to take a third. Okay. And sometimes I'll triple them up. Okay. And just sometimes because they break. So anytime you have an elastic breaks, don't think it's not a good elastic. Just, just the way it's made for a particular reason. So counter the reason by adding more elastic to it. Okay. Now, now I'm going to come through and now I'm going to just cross and come through and that's all I want. Okay. All right. Now, once I'm here, what I want to do is I want to go through and create that French twist. So I'm going to come in this direction. So I'm coming from the left to the right, because what I'm going to do is pull that hair through. Then I want to come through it. You could come the opposite way if you want. It's all up to you in terms of the direction that you want to go. So let's actually go in this direction, this direction. So when I think about it, think about, you know, when I do my French twist, which way is it going to sit? Okay. So in other words, if I go this direction and I, I poke here, okay, see that? And then what I want to do is I come through. Notice how I'll go through with one finger, okay? Now pull out with that one finger. So see how that loosened that up, okay? Now once you got that, now go in with your uh, middle finger directly over that, okay? So what you're trying to do is not get any little hairs in between these two fingers. Now twist, twist, twist. Now grab. See how I grabbed and pull through, okay, so that you get this, okay? Now, once I have this, now it's just a matter of me going in and thinking about how do I want my French twist to sit? See, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm using this as my base. That's what's cool about this. So let's take a look at this opposite side so you can see what happened when I, how, it, how did it transition from when I pulled it through, okay? Look at that. That's what it did. So you could, I mean, this is even cool, putting a ponytail like that, I think is cool, okay? But look at the back. So you'd have to do something with the back if they're going to leave this ponytail down like that. See that? So I'd do something probably right here. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to come through, look at the brush, look, see how I'm with the grain. I'm going to detangle first, okay? Now I need some support, okay? So my goal is I'm going to come through, I'm going to do this. That's my goal. So I want some support inside of this. So to get the support, first, hairspray. And then length of the can to determine the distance. That's a great hot tip for the client so that they don't overspray or come back and say, that hairspray is too sticky. That's just because you use too much, Louise. Okay, come in. Here we come through. Okay. Questions, Andrew? How are we doing, buddy? Good. Um, there is a question here from TM Hairstyles. Uh, they're asking, uh, always struggle finding the right foundation to start with. Do you have a go-to method or technique that's foolproof? All right. I want you to check out our art team member, Anna Peters. Okay. Anna Peters is our go-to girl for these up styles. I'm secondary. She's awesome. She has a foundation. Go to our YouTube channel. If you're not subscribing to our YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Go to Sam Via Tutorials. Put the hit the subscribe button and push the bell button. That way you're going to get notifications when we got something going live. But go to our YouTube channel. On our YouTube channel, Anna has a foundation segment. And it's I think it's about an hour long. But in that foundation segment, she talks about how to build foundations. And she uses a lot of braids to build her foundations. And another one that I love watching too is Sharon Blaine, Andrew. Sharon Blaine, she used from Australia. She uses a lot of braids to anchor. See, the problem is what we did was we did, we back in the days, we used to use a lot of backcombing. OK, now we want things. You're still going to need backcombing. Don't misunderstand me, guys. Everything you learn, keep it in your pocket. Someday you're going to need it. OK, but what we've discovered is with braids and things, we're discovering, well, I don't need to backcomb. But what I just did there was I just did a little bit of French lacing, something I learned in beauty school for those students that are here today. Any students say if you're a student, just say student. OK. But the idea, Tammy, do you, 
Yeah, go ahead. AC. Sorry, do you use backcombing for finer hair? Yes, but I'll use it at the base. I'll use that at the base. And then what I might do, Andrew, is maybe hit it with a texture iron at the base on fine hair, then add a little bit of backcombing. That way you're going to get strong hold. Listen to your client in regards to my hair collapses. My hair collapses. It never holds. It never holds. Then you know, okay, I've got to work with her and get this to hold. Now watch what I'm going to do. So I'll use backcombing. Don't get me wrong, but I think we're moving more away from it. Use it when you need it because there's definitely things when, times when you need things. Okay. Now watch what I'm going to do. All I'm going to do now is I put elastic on that. Look at that. A little bit of French lacing inside, not on the outside. Okay. Now all I'm going to do is just come in and just start to place it. Okay. So I place it. Okay. And I've got my little elastic. It went inside. And then remember, where you hold is where you pin. So let's take a look and see how I want to play. Look at, see how I'm folding that in. Okay. That's good. I like that. So. Now that I have it, I'm going to come through with a large grip, okay? And I'm going to slide this one down inside. Now, watch how I'm going to take, take this and I'm going to open it. I'm going to place it with a toe. See, I opened that with a toe because I want that toe up against her head. Okay, now I've got that top. Now I'm going to come underneath and I'm going to take another one, okay? And I want that toe up against her head, but I'm going to open it so I catch capture as much hair as I can inside based upon what I did. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to take, to cut, take one more right at this corner right here. So I open and I place right inside. Okay. Now notice I have not done anything, anything to this, this area here that you see on the side. So I haven't done anything to it. What I want to do first, I want to close this off. So I'm just coming through the top, just using my hands and close that off. But before I go, this is, this can be a lifesaver in some of these looks that you're working with and how you're working with them is your hairspray. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to work on that top. See, and it's not so, so, so like it's a, perfectly symmetric. I kind of like the way this is leaning like that. Okay. So let's go into that top area. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work with my pens. Okay. So I'm just going to pen right where I want that to sit. Okay. All right. Excellent. Now I'm going to take another pen right where I want that to sit. Now I'm going to rely on my hairspray. Okay, now you can pull pieces out, guys, if you wanted to. That's going to be your choice in terms of how you want to do that. So what these pants did is just hold that while I spray. Once I've got that, now come in with a small one. Okay, and now I'm going to use my small one just to anchor inside. So it goes all the way in, so it just disappears. Okay. So now that's just a really cool way, guys, I think, to go in and just make add a, do a French twist. So it, it's just a little bit different in regards to the simplicity of it in terms of making it. And then wherever you see you need to fill in a gap, just use your hairpin just to fill in that gap. And you're good to go. Like, see this gap, guys? Once again, I'm not perfect. Right here, just going to use that pen just to fill in that gap. All right. If you learned something here, just give me a yes. Just another way to go in and do that. Okay. Yes. All right. Let's move This is on. definitely a shape that's always been super challenging. And that little slip through the center builds so much structure to it and makes things so simple. Right. And then from there, take what you know and build your twist. You know, like lots of backcombing, guys, if you want. That's, that's going to be your call. Okay. Here's half up, half down. This is pretty interesting. Remember, this one, it kind of it's kind of like, wow. Okay, well, what is that, Sam? Watch. I'm gonna show you how I did this. Okay, let's take out that take out. What is that you pulled out, Sam? These are my notes, guys, telling me what look to do on what. <laughs> you know, so Sam, did you practice these? Yes, guys, I rehearse. I rehearse. I don't just get up in the morning and do this for you. I want to make sure that I've rehearsed what I want to show you. So that way it's got some good value to it. And 
I mean, it, it works. Look, I'm going to give you things that I feel work. I'm going to give you things that I think that really add value to the salon. I think it's so important right now that you really consider, think about what you're doing and adding value to the salon. I think that's so important in regards to that. When you think, say value, Sam, what do you need to do? What are you talking about? Teach them. That's value. You know, uh, while the color is processing, I highly recommend invest in a Pivot Point Lydia mannequin. That's a Sam Via Lydia mannequin. It's our mannequin that Pivot Point made for us, and we're very proud of it. But I write and suggest invest in one of those and use that as your uh, communication tool. What do you mean, Sam? Well, while the color is processing, grab your mannequin, your tripod, and teach the client to do some of these things. You see, that's adding value. Robert Cromings is talking a lot about it, Andrew, in terms of, you know, creating experience. We've been talking about about creating an experience at a chair. You have to create an experience at the chair, guys. So part of that experience that we used to do is let's have fun and let's talk about what they wanted to talk about. Well, now I think you need to be talking about how can I help you? What are your problems, Louise? I've got the solutions. I think it's all about problems and solutions. That's why I said earlier, the, the hairdresser that's going to be the educator behind the chair is going to win the game of the future. And I firmly, firmly believe that. Okay. All right. Oh, I don't like that ponytail. What didn't you like, Sam? It just wasn't, wasn't there. All right. Just once again, my eyes. Okay. Over the years, my eyes have changed. I see things differently. Like in the beginning of my career, I did not like frizz. Now, Andrew, I love frizz. Okay. And what I mean by frizz is like, you know, just frizz, like a rickrack set. That was frizzy. It wasn't one of my favorite looks, but I got into it because I, my eyes changed. You know, my my the taste is a journey in this industry in terms of what you do and your taste buds. They will change as the years go on. Well, what are you doing, Sam? Well, I just come once again. <laughs> oh. What's going on over there? Well, Andrew, I, you know, I know what look I'm going to do, but here I am going to do another look. I'm like, dude, dude, one look at a time. OK, whatever, right. man. We'll take grab whatever you got. <laughs> I grab a section. All right. Watch this now. Now, for those of you who follow me, if you remember, there was a look I showed you maybe 10 years ago where I was tying these things. Watch now what's going to happen. I want to create an upstyle this way now. Okay. So let's grab a section. All right. I'm going to take the right over the left and I'm going to move to the left of center. I'm going to center her. Okay. I'm going to move the left to the left of center, right over left. And now watch the right section. And I'm going to keep this nice and casual. Okay. Now watch the right section. It goes right over. Now just tie it, bringing the right underneath and over. Why? Because I want it to look like that. See that? I want it to look like that. So now once I have that, I'm going to take an elastic and place an elastic right there. Okay. Now once I've done that, got my elastic set here, I'm going to come back over and I'm going to do it again. But what I want to make is I want to make a diagonal line of these, Andrew. Okay. So here's my first one. I'm going to do three of them. Watch how I'm going to set them up. Okay. So here's my first one. Okay. Now make it tight there. Okay. Now I'll take my second one. So I want my knots to go di kind of diagonal this way, three of them. So I'm going to take my second one. Okay. Bring my second one over that. See how it's going over that. Okay. Bring my next one. Okay. Right over left. And the reason being is because I want that loop to be seen over that. So don't just tie a shoelace. There's a method to this rhythm here. Now I come through over and through and now tie again. Okay. Now look at this one. See, see how this is, see how it's going diagonal. Now I take my hand and I'll grab another clear elastic. Okay. And I'm going to use clear because you want to hide them each time I'm tying over it or putting a ponytail over it. It will hide the previous one, but you can you can see if you if you don't hide it, you can pull down and you can easily get rid of it. So, okay, once again, twist, cross once in a while, but I'm not crossing every single time. Okay, great little trick here. Okay, all right, now once I'm here, there. Okay, now watch this. Now watch me rouge that up. See, I'm just rouging that up right where I want that. Pull that one down. Now, can you see the diagonal? Let me get it there. Okay, see how it's going diagonal this way. Okay, we're gonna do one more now. Okay, so I'm gonna take one more right here. Okay, excellent. I think I might go one another one too. We'll see. 
All right, right over left. Okay, right over left. Now bring that right over left, bring it under and over. Okay, so you get an overlap. See that overlap? Now look how I got three of them here, Andrew. See that? All right, now I come through and apply an elastic. Okay. All right, here. I think body position here is critical, guys. You got to move your body in front of it. If I stay to the left of center, then what's going to happen? You're going to pull everything to the left of center. So really be aware where your body position is when you're doing a lot of these things here. Okay. Now, can you see how I've got these, these guys there? That's critical. I've got three little knots here. I'm going to show them to you. Okay. And see how they're going diagonal across. Okay. Now, once I've got these three, grab them. One, two. And here is three. Okay. So those are the three. But what I want to do is take these three and make it into, let's say, four. Okay. So I'm going to grab these three. Okay. You see that? Now all I'm going to do is come through. And I'm just going to braid. Okay. So I can easily braid, very, very simple. Okay. And then what I want you to do is just kind of just push up. See, I'm just pushing it up and see how that just kind of gives that a different look. And then you could pin there. Now, what I did was once I got here, Andrew, and then you can leave this braid down, whatever you want to do, or you can pin it up. Watch what I'm going to do here. And then what I did, Andrew, is I just started pulling on it and messing it up. And that's how I had that one look that you saw right there. But see, this to me, guys, once again, let's say she's going to go out wet after you've done a highlight. You've done that highlight, and she doesn't want to blow dry, okay? Well, this is something that you could do where she goes out wet, real simple. But the idea is there's going to be some texture in that. So once I'm here, I'm going to take the elastic, Go the grip goes right through that elastic, okay? Now I'm going to bring a grip right across that, bring another one across that. Okay. And then what I did was I just started pulling on these guys. You see, I'm just pulling on that. So you just start pulling on them and just start massaging on them. And you just start getting these different effects in terms of it looking a little bit more organic and not so, so lived in. Now watch the profile when I go profile. See, that to me has some visual value to it in terms of what it is that you see there. I think that's quite interesting in regards there. Okay. Did you learn something there, guys? Yes or no? Okay. And just play with them. And now just kind of really get that natural movement. A lot of times I like to kind of like hit it with a blow dryer just to get that texture out of that. Okay. This was something that you and Geneva really helped me to understand too with upstyles and just kind of different finishes like this is just to play with things because... Yeah. I think because I've been a hair cutter, so focused on hair cutting for so long, I almost feel like there's a consequence to when we don't do something correctly. But you both kept reminding me, this isn't a haircut. It's not like hair sitting the floor. So if you don't like what you, you've done, well, just pull it out and repin yeah. it. Just pull it out and, and you, redo it. It's that and, easy. And, and sometimes, Andrew, when you pull it out, you're like, oh, oh, oh. I mean, that happens to us at photo shoots. We'll be doing something and we got the look. Then we pull it out and we'll be like, oh, shoot it. You know, take the picture. So, Most definitely. Uh, all right. One more, one more last look, Andrew, and then I'll, I'll call it, buddy. Okay. This one I've been doing a lot, lady. Uh, it's been uh, a, a lot of requests for it in terms of people that have seen it and regards to watch. Hi, Marisa. How are you, my dear? So the idea here, once again, is just create a flower. Actually, this was posted on our IG uh, 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 Instagram. So if you're not following us on Instagram, please do Sam via hair, go to Facebook, uh, Sam via pro and follow us there, but it's posted. So you can always go back and watch it here on Facebook or YouTube, or you can go back and watch it on IG. All right. This is about a try and take it a section with a triangle and then product of choice. Once again, notice I'm always going back to either my rough paste or my outshine zero one understanding. Watch, look at the section. Now watch me just run that through, okay? And look how mold, how it just binded that hair together. You're going to have a lot more control with this particular technique. So we're going to go in with a triangle. There is a triangle. Look at the top of the triangle. 
I'll bring her up a little bit so you can see. Triangle, that's the top, my index finger. Look at the corners of the triangle. So here's the top of the triangle. Here's a corner, and there's a corner. Corner, corner, top. Okay, now watch what I'm going to do. Index finger goes on top, pull through, twist, and place it into this index finger. Okay, now all I'm simply going to do is just cross it, just lock it. So I just locked it just like I was going to pull a ponytail through. Okay, now look at the triangle. I'm going to put it on her face. You can see it. See the triangle? Okay, now my index finger goes to the top of the triangle. Watch me go inside the triangle between my finger and the hair, grab it, pull through, and twist. And now lock. Okay, back to a triangle. Okay, once I'm here, top of the triangle, hair, twist, and pull through. Boom. Come through, pull through. Okay, let's go one more time. I got room for one more, meaning I've got length for one more. Okay, now lock, lock. See, I'm just twisting and locking. Okay, now once I'm here, bring your head forward. Okay, index finger, index finger. See that? Now slide this all off that finger. Don't release your index finger. They're still touching. Now throw the elastic over everything. Just toss it over there. Now watch what's going to happen. The elastic's going to go there. Then all of that is going to spread out for you so that you get this look. Okay. Now take the excess hair that you have, wrap it around the flower. Okay. And now just come in and pin. So I'm going to put that one right there like an accessory. Okay. Now, when you pin, I want you to take a small hairpin, okay? And now look how I've curved that hairpin. So it's curved to the shape of the head, okay? Now come through, pinch the legs together. Look how I pinched it. See how I'm pinching it? The idea is to get it in. Once I've got it in, it touches the head, release it, and it'll spread, it'll catch the hair. But by pinching it, it's not gonna, it, it brings, makes the pin smaller, so it's not so exposed, if you will. Okay, good. Okay, now I need to put one right there so it sits like this. So now I'm going to grab another small hairpin, shape of the head, okay? And now I'm going to come in this way. So I'm going to spread the legs. See, see how I just pinched those legs just to get the pin where I want. Catch a little bit of hair. Okay, now slide it in to the shape of the head. Okay, now it set, sits right there. See, I think that's just a cool accessory. Just a cool little thing to do there in terms of that. So I had some fun, Andrew. I, you know, I, I, you know what? That was nice, fun, casual. I hope that you, you certainly walked away. If you can walk away with one thing, guys, in this hour that you've had an opportunity to spend with us, I think it makes it worthwhile. But what makes it even more worthwhile is that you practice it. Go back, practice it. Switch it up. Remember, we're just a messenger. Here it is. You know, none of these tricks I've made up, I've seen them before, and I practice, practice. I'm the messenger. I'm a teacher. So I'm not the inventor of these things. I'll take something, see it, twist it, turn it, do this, and boom, you'll come up with something. But have some fun. I think that's the idea. Remember, the beauty boom is happening. Get on board. What do you mean beauty boom, Sam? Finishing. The name of the game in the future is going to be finishing. It's, you know, we've got it's so good to see us get back into cutting, Andrew. But now, watch out, guys. The finishing game is going to be happening. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, to my friends out there that are like me and never really got super into F-Styles and finishing in, in the salon, you know, also remember that these are great practices just for dexterity and creativity, too. You know, like when we would do these kind of hair jams together, Sam, with um, with Geneva and, you know, just get creative with F-Styles, I would always walk away feeling inspired Yep. Maybe I didn't go back to the salon and, you know, book a bunch of new appointments for um, upstyles, but I still walked away and inspired and felt like it added to the dexterity in my hands. Yeah. And you know what, Andrew, maybe it's not anything that you're really going to focus on doing, but the, uh, behind the chair. But what I love what you just said is what it did to your hands. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important, guys. All right, Mr. AC, cool. I just want to answer Marissa's question. She said, can you take a hairpin, a grip, and a grip, and elastic? Yes, this is a great way to go in and secure a ponytail. So to go in and secure a ponytail, basically you're going to bring it back, do this. you got your hand here. You're holding it. Take the elastic, go right down the center. Take this pin, go around and around, and come back through and pin in, and boom, you've been able to secure your ponytail. 
So yeah, it's a great way to work it. Make sure that you're pinning, obviously, guys, the, where you need to pin. So thanks for saying that and suggesting that, Marissa. You can certainly do that. Yeah, great. Hey, always a pleasure to see you, bro. 